We are going to leave this hearing to go live now to the Capitol for news conference with House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi regarding Russia's influence on the 2016 presidential campaign. This is just getting underway. That oath was tested when the U.S. Intelligence Committee concluded that Russia interfered in the 2016 elections and will do so again. One year from today, the community made that revelation. Since then, more information about the scale of Russia's rising threat to our democracy has emerged. The unprecedented attack requires a whole-of-government response. The American people deserve a comprehensive and fair investigation <coughs> in the totality of Russia's attack on our electoral system. Yet the Republican-controlled House continues to block Democrats' efforts to investigate the attack. Last week, I sent a letter calling on Speaker Ryan to allow the Intelligence Committee to continue its investigation, but received no response. To date, the House has held only one full committee public hearing on the most significant finding of the report, the continued vulnerability of our elections to foreign interference. House Republicans must show real leadership and join Democrats to find answers to the multitude of vital unanswered questions. Nothing less than the strength of our, and integrity of America's de democracy and national security are at stake. And that is what we take an oath of office to support and defend our Constitution and the American people. I'm very pleased to be joined here this afternoon by leadership of the Committees of Jurisdiction. I'm going to yield now to Representative Thompson, thank him as Ranking Member on Homeland Security, former chair of that committee, for his great leadership in protecting our electoral system and protecting our homeland security. Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Leader. As most of you know, uh, at some point, the, the Trump administration finally acknowledged that there had been Russian interference in the election. Uh, there have been over 21 <laughs> states that have been documented in being hacked. Uh, before that, Secretary Jay Johnson declared our election system critical infrastructure. And with that critical infrastructure designation, it put DHS in the middle of looking at what's going on. Well, when you start looking at what's going on, it's obvious uh, from the information Russia has been a bad actor in this process. So on the Homeland Security Committee side, we have attempted uh, a number of times to get our committee to hold hearings, to listen to witnesses, to do those things that members of Congress should do in order to do their job. However, we have yet to have one formal hearing uh, on our election system and the compromising that occurred. More importantly uh, with that is after uh, this futile attempt to get uh, the committee to move forward, uh, we convinced uh, Leader Pelosi uh, that maybe we need to form an elections task force to look at this issue because it won't go away. We know uh, from all indications that the next election, uh, which will upon us within a year, there's potential Russian uh, actors who will be moving, but also there's the 2020 election upon us. And up to this point, there's nothing that's gone uh, forward with it. Now, I'm happy to say that our task force, we've looked at uh, a number of uh, opportunities. We've had a number of witnesses to come before the task force, and very shortly, we will be producing the report uh, from that elections task force, which I believe will crystallize, uh, more importantly, what we have to be faced with. As important is the fact that states have said we need financial help in order for this to go forward. So we've pre-filed legislation uh, that will provide resources to states to acquire the proper election equipment. But that's the first step, and we look forward 
from the Homeland Security side to working with our colleagues on making sure that our election infrastructure uh, is secure. Thank you. I yield to Congresswoman Waters. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm here today as a ranking member of the Financial Services Committee uh, to basically talk about what we have done uh, to find out more about this president and his financial dealings. Uh, and so uh, I and other Democrats on the Financial Services Committee called upon the chairman of the committee to utilize the investigatory powers of the committee to scrutinize the suspicious financial dealings of President Trump and his family members and his associates. It is very clear that Donald Trump has something to hide when it comes to his finances. Why does Trump refuse to reveal his tax returns to the public? Why was Deutsche Bank, a bank that has been fined for Russian money laundering and many other violations of law, willing to lend hundreds of millions of dollars to Trump after his bankruptcies when no other bank would lend to him? Why are so many properties owned, licensed, or branded under Trump's name sold to Russians associated with criminal activity or to secretive shell companies, which are known for facilitating money laundering and masking foreign influence. But despite the urgency of learning whether this president is somehow compromised, committed Republicans have turned down all of our requests for cooperation at every turn. In March of last year, I and committee Democrats wrote to Chairman Henselin to request that the committee use the full range of its investigative powers to examine Deutsche Bank's Russian money laundering operation and assess the integrity of the United States Department of Justice's ongoing investigation into the scheme, given the Trump administration's conflicts of interest in the matter and Attorney General Sessions' communications with the Russian ambassador. Chairman Henselin did not reply. In July, I introduced a resolution of inquiry directing the Treasury Secretary, that is, Secretary Muchen, to provide Congress with documents from the Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, known as FinCEN, regarding the financial and business dealings of President Trump, his family members, his associates, including those with Russia, and to uncover any evidence of illicit activity that may have compromised the president. The measure was blocked by committed Republicans along party lines. In August, I and other committee Democrats wrote again to Chairman Henselin to request that he use his unilateral subpoena authority to request documents from Deutsche Bank related to the 2011 Russian mirror trading scheme and any internal reviews of the personal accounts of President Trump and his associates. Chairman Henselin has refused to cooperate with the request as part of as part of our efforts, I and other committee Democrats have also sent letters to the Treasury Department, Deutsche Bank, and Deutsche Bank's external counsel, but none of them have cooperated with our requests. I recently led a, a letter from 171 members of Congress to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to express our support for the investigation being conducted by Special Counsel Robert S. Mueller. It's time for Republicans in Congress to stop covering up for this president, stop the attacks on the critically important work of Special Counsel Mueller, and start doing real oversight on behalf of the American public. And with that, I will yield to Representative Nattler. Thank you very much, Maxine. One year ago this week, the Director of National Intelligence confirmed that Russia had interfered with the 2016 presidential election. Since then, we have learned that at least 21 states were targets of Russian hacking, and the Attorney General admitted at our hearing, that is the Judiciary Committee hearing, that he has no plans to respond, that President Trump's former National Security Advisor 
and his former campaign foreign policy advisor have both pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about, these contact, about their contacts with Russia, and that the FBI director was fired for investigating, quote, this Russia thing, unquote. The Republican majority has responded not by investigating the wrongdoing, but by abdicating their oversight responsibility and trying to undermine the special counsel. Why else would they reject 11 resolutions of inquiry requesting information about these charges? Why else would the majority ignore the 48 oversight letters we have written? Why else would the White House counsel have worked so hard to prevent the Attorney General from recusing himself from the investigation, as we learned last week? And now that Mr. Mueller's investigation appears to be closing in on the White House, the Republicans have decided to attack him. They argue that there is a conflict of interest when the rules, in fact, have been scrupulously applied. They complain about bias by the FBI when the one agent they point to was removed. The Republicans now besmirch the reputation of Robert Mueller, a Republican of unimpeachable credentials and a decorated war veteran, even though they previously praised his integrity and they twice unanimously confirmed him as FBI director. They complain about the role of the Fusion GPS dossier in the initiation of the investigation, when we now know that it was admissions by Mr. Trump's own foreign policy advisor, Mr. Papadopoulos, that resulted in the opening of the investigation, not the dossier. The continued failure of the Republicans to act on these fundamental concerns is an unmitigated disservice to all Americans. The continued failure of the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security to, tr to act to protect the integrity of our future elections starting this year from hacking and attacks by the Russians or anyone else is a disgrace and a disservice to the Constitution and to the American people. Accordingly, I am proud to join my colleagues today in asking the Republicans to finally allow the House to fulfill its constitutional oversight role. The American public deserves no less. Now I'm happy to introduce uh, Congressman uh, Jerry Connolly. Thank you, Mr. Nadler. Um, in my religious tradition, there are two kinds of sin. Sins of commission, something you do you should not, and sins of omission, something you should do that you did not do. And in the Russia thing, here in Congress, we see both kinds of sin. So we see an active attempt to discredit an ongoing investigation headed by a man of impeccable credentials and unimpeachable a virtue. We see the firing of the FBI director and the calls for the head of the deputy FBI director. We even see attempts to unseat the attorney general because of his recusal. A recusal required because he didn't tell the full truth in his own nomination hearing before the United States Senate. When you watch these sins of commission, what you see is a strategy, which is, hey, look over there. Don't look over here. And we can't be fooled by that as a country. Our country is at stake. This is about foreign adversarial influence in our electoral process. It goes to the heart of being a democracy. And the calls we're asking for involve standing up for your country. Are you willing to put your country ahead of your party? Or are you going to be an enabler and an equivocator and a rationalizer because you can get short-term political gain out of it at the enormous cost to our republic and to the democratic process? And then there are sins of omission. I, I serve with Elijah Cummings on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. A committee that issued subpoenas at the drop of a hat. A committee that denied the Fifth Amendment rights of an IRS employee. A committee that actually voted to center the Attorney General, the then Attorney General of the United States. A committee that started the Benghazi uh, hearings, questioned the credentials and the honor of two incredible public servants who did an exhaustive examination of the events and facts involving Benghazi, that didn't stop them. They went on to have a special committee and spent millions of dollars headed by now the chairman of my committee. 
Sins of omission. But you know what? They seem to have forgotten or can't find that subpoena pen anymore. They seem to have forgotten how to have a hearing on arguably the most important existential issue facing the United States, the active interference of Russia in our electoral process. Not a single hearing at the full committee level. No interest. Look over there. And so we're here today to call upon our colleagues on the other side of the aisle to stand up for your country. This isn't about partisan politics. This is about protecting our beloved country. And everybody needs to be counted. And it's not about a partisan game. It is about protecting the interests of the American electorate. Thank you for having me here today. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend, the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Elliot Engel. Thanks, Jerry. And um, let me say it's good to see everyone here. I'm Elliot Engel. As Jerry mentioned before, I'm the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. A year's gone by since our intelligence agency shined a light on Russia's scheme to interfere with the 2016 elections. A year has gone by, and there have been no consequences whatsoever for those who attacked American democracy. A year has gone by, and nothing has been done to Russia to stop it from doing this again. And we know the Russians are trying. CIA Director Pompeo, former member of the House, said as much on TV over the weekend. Our ambassador to Russia, John Huntsman, the Foreign Affairs Committee met with him this morning, confirmed it again when he briefed members of our committee. Putin views 2016 as a successful operation. Russia got what it wanted and so far has acted with impunity. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they do it again? So my question for Republican leaders is simple. What are we going to do about it? What steps are we going to take to protect our democracy before Americans go back to the polls? Or are we just going to leave the door open to another attack? You see, it doesn't matter to me whether they tried to help Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. The fact of the matter is, I don't want the Russians interfering in our democracy. And no American representative should. And the House of Representatives has been silent. And that's not acceptable to anybody. We passed new tough sanctions last year on a bipartisan way, out of the Foreign Affairs Committee onto the floor. And the sanctions held Russia accountable for election interference. So far, these tools have sat on the shelf. The President has done nothing with this legislation. And so we've passed it, but we haven't implemented it. That's ab absolutely unacceptable. So it's time to do more. Last year, I introduced a bill with my friend Jerry Connolly of Virginia. We call it the Secure Our Democracy Act. And it would go even farther with sanctions, specifically, specifically going after anyone who played a role in election interference from the year 2016 onward. We should move that bill, or we should find some other way to prevent another scenario like what we saw in 2016. And if Republican leaders are not willing to do what it takes to protect our election system, they need to explain why. The clock is ticking, and Russia is coming for us again. Thank you. I thank our distinguished chairman, the ranking members of the committees of jurisdiction of, as we have discussed, Congressman Engel of New York, the ranking member on the Foreign <clears throat> Affairs Committee, Congressman Nadler of New York, ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California, the ranking member on the Financial Services Committee, Congressman Benny Thompson, as I mentioned, the ranking member of the Homeland Security Committee. Uh, uh, Elijah Cummings isn't with us, but he joined our colleagues in signing a letter. And, and instead, we have the vice ranking member of the uh, uh, Oversight and Home. It used to be Kev Ops when I was on the committee. The name was changed. The Oversight and Government Reform uh, Committee, Jerry Conley, who is also a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And he, they were joined by Congressman Bob Brady, ranking member on House Administration Committee, in sending a letter to the speaker. And in the letter, uh, they ask for, and they say, 
We are extremely concerned by the Intelligence Committee's warning that Russia may attempt to — the Intelligence Community's warning that, the Rus that Russia may attempt to interfere with future elections, including the up upcoming midterm elections. And we are deeply troubled by the lack of action by the Trump administration and the House Republicans in responding to this core threat to our democracy. I thank them for sending that letter asking for action. And in the letter, uh, they say, as members, we take a solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution and protect the American people. The failure of House Republicans to take strong and swift action in the face of Russia's assault on our democracy is beneath the dignity of this oath. The strength and integrity of our democracy, the rule of law, and our democratic institutions hang in the balance. And hence, they ask for action. I thank them for their leadership on their committees and for their presentations today. I'm sure they'll be pleased to take any questions that you may have on this subject. How hopeful are you that um, Ryan will respond to your call to action if you had to put a number to it? <laughs> on a score of what to what? Um, <laughs> well, we haven't heard back yet, uh, but I want the purpose of our coming together today in this week, one year from before now, was when the intelligence community put forth this challenge. I have no doubt uh, that if the Democrats were in power, we would have taken action to protect our electoral system. I have no doubt if the Democrats were in power, the Republicans would be urging that action. But that's not what they are doing. And as Congresswoman Waters said, for some reason, they are protecting, they are protecting the president. And we want to know, we just want to know, get the facts. This is only about getting the facts about our election so that we can protect them. I hope that the odds are very high uh, that the speaker will respond. And I hope that the public <coughs> visibility of the letter that our colleagues have sent and the actions that the American people are calling for uh, will motivate him to respond in a positive way and honor his oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Does anyone want to say anything about that? Let me, let me, let me add one thing. He is, um, the Republicans have shown, they, they have, they, they have uh, circled the wagons around the president, that's obvious. They are attack, they're trying to discredit the special prosecutor, that's obvious, and the FBI, the institutions of government in charge of investigation. They're throwing lots of things against the wall, the Hillary, the all kinds of things, Uranium One, to try to distract from the main event. But the key is, one key, I should say, is not whether there was collusion last year, which is, is, is what the special prosecutor is investigating, but the key is we were attacked by the Russians. The intelligence community and military experts have been warning for years that a war can be waged against this country by cyber warfare, not by what we traditionally consider military force. That started. We were attacked. This, the the um, intelligence community says we're going to continue to be attacked. And what we're talking about today, one of the things we're talking about today is we have to defend ourselves. The administration, by refusing to acknowledge the attack, is refusing to do anything to defend ourselves. Imagine if the day after Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt had said, well, I'm not, we're not sure who did that, and therefore we can't defend the, uh, in the future against it. We are saying that this administration, the Congress must make the administration defend us against the continuing attack, the continuing warfare against American democracy by a foreign adversary. Yes, sir. Um, Madam Leader, you, you mentioned um, what Democrats would do were you in power, if you were in power next year, um, is it fair to expect that these committees would take some of the actions you've talked about wanting to take today? And what could we expect in terms of investigative efforts uh, next year if you want control? Well, first of all, I hope we don't have to wait until next year for Congress to take action to protect uh, the integrity of our elections uh, in our country. We have a very important election coming up, uh, but every election is important, and they're happening across the country in the spring, starting pretty soon. Uh, but you would expect in everything that we do, openness, integrity, something that unifies our country rather than divides our country, bipartisanship, and how we would go forward in honoring our oath of office. You have a question? Yes, sir. Oh. 
Yes, sir. Um, so it seems like most of the investigation on uh, the Russian interference has been focused on the impact on the presidential election. Um, a few moments ago, you were expressing concern about the impact it could have potentially on the midterms um, later this year. How real is that concern, and do you see signs of um, any sort of impact on the special elections that we've had this year, whether it's been the Doug Jones race in Alabama, was there any indication that Russia was um, interfering in, in that type of a race when they can focus on something singular? And if not, I mean, where is the concern that they're going to pluck out a bunch of members that represent, you know, respectfully smaller constituencies than the president's? But if I just I say uh, that the evidence is about what they did in the last election, we're about the future in all of this, and that's why we're calling for the action. Well, I think. Uh, uh, in all the intelligence briefings we've, we've had on this subject, uh, it's been uh, publicly acknowledged that Russia interfered, that they, they did certain things. Now, to the extent that we can identify 21 states uh, that in some form or another had Russian participation uh, in their uh, electoral system uh, is correct. The challenge for us is every state has an individual system. There's no uniform system. And as uh, Congressman Natler uh, also talked about, uh, because you have those individual systems, uh, we have started looking at how we as members of Congress can incentivize those states to do certain things to protect their systems. And so part of it is legislation that we've introduced uh, on the uh, elections task force side is to provide some monies for states uh, to incentivize them to show up their systems and protect them. But you know, the Russians are unique. They're aggressive. Um, and what we have to do is be equally as unique and aggressive in defending ourselves. So uh, I'm optimistic that if we can get the Republican leadership to work with us, that we can come up with a bipartisan solution. But at this point, uh, it's all Democrats pushing uh, to come up with solutions that we all know uh, the Russians created from a problem standpoint. The Russians have trolling farms that are operative right now and that are trolling uh, some of our members. We also have a report that I heard about yesterday that's going to be revealed about how the Russians have interfered with, hacked into election systems in other countries and how they do it. So first of all, we cannot believe that somehow they're going to stop uh, the interference because somehow they think uh, it's the wrong thing to do and they shouldn't be doing it. Uh, secondly, I think it's important to understand that the President of the United States must show his opposition to Russia, their interference, and their lying. I am still bothered by the President of the United States saying that when he talked to Putin, Putin said they didn't do it. And so as if that's an answer, it is important for the President of the United States to provide the leadership to say that we are not going to tolerate it, uh, we cannot be friends with, we are not going to cooperate with, and we are not going to tolerate uh, this kind of interference with our elections. I have not heard that from this President yet. Can I just say uh, to your question, now we just had uh, elections in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And uh, you, you, I'm sure, followed the fact that there was one election that, upon recount, uh, uh, you know, we had a one-vote margin. And the next day, a court ruled, actually, the invalid ballot was valid, making an exact tie. Now, had there been interference, evidence of interference in that election, the entire system would have come down in terms of public confidence in the result. And although it's a tied election that gets determined by statute by pulling a, a name out of a, a bowl, 
The fact of the matter is the public had confidence in the recount and in the validity of the ballots cast. When you have this kind of comprehensive foreign interference in an election, you risk all of that. And when you risk that, you risk the legitimacy of democratic institutions. That's what's at stake. And that's why it's so important to get at the heart of it and to make sure, as Mr. Nadler and Ms. Waters and Mr. Thompson said, and protect themselves against it. I just want to add one clarification. There's a difference, obviously, one type of interference is interfering with the, uh, with the physical, electronic uh, machinery of counting votes or registering voters, et cetera. And that's where we know there were attempts in 21 states. Mm -hmm. Completely different. And that's one thing. And as far as we know, uh, they didn't succeed in actually affecting the, the physical count of ballots cast. Mm -hmm. But secondly, uh, wh what we're really talking about is interfering with the election campaign in various ways by uh, all the things you, you've heard about. We do know, in direct answer to your question, uh, that the Russians last year interfered not only in the, in the presidential race, but, I've, I've, uh, but in, in congressional races as well, in over 20 congressional races. Um, how much that affected, if anything, is unknowable. We know they interfered with artificial, you know, with, with, with bots and uh, fake Facebook and all this stuff in at least 20 congressional races. And if they did that last year, there's nothing to say they won't do it again in 50 congressional races. And that's what we have to protect ourselves from. And, and not only congressional, who knows, maybe st sheriff somewhere. Don't catch me. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you very you. much. County assessment. That's what they really do.